the right hand after that, you didn't wait for an invitation, went right at him. Not at all. It's, it's my style. You, you make your own opening. You, you time things. Everything was set up. When I when he went down the first time, I knew what was going to hit him, and that's how he planned. To be a pro fighter, I'm the master of the pinpoint. My, my shots are so accurate and so precise, not to be egotistic, but when they land, they're so precise. I you can't I just can't help it who you are. You have to go down because there's a law when Mike Tyson hits you. Any heavyweight was going to go down from that right hand the way you hit him. I believe so also. And I like to thank um, my manager right here, Jim Jacobs, for giving me the opportunity to fight with Jeff Levine. Okay, let's bring Jim in here. Jim, hi, Steve. Is he going to knock out everybody? Yeah. Well, we have a marvelous problem, Steve. As I told you uh, before the fight, the marvelous problem is that it's very difficult. Uh, with a kid who throws hydrogen bombs mm -hmm. to get him experience. What broke him down? Was it just Constantly the body punches. When I was, I was hitting him with body punches, I heard him, actually, he was crying in there, making woman gestures like, oh, oh, oh. I can't How, find yeah. him, but I knew that he was breaking down soon. You're saying that Biggs was crying when yes. you hit him? Yes. When, when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. So that you knew you had him by that Absolutely, time? Absolutely, but I knew he was, he was tough in there taking those punches. Were you then surprised that he came back and he seemed no, to hit you with a good, pretty good left in I that round? He got up. He meant Ben. That's the old man. <laughs> <laughs> but did he? Did that left hand shake you momentarily that he hit you with in that round? He was throwing a great deal of hard punches, but I refused to go down. It didn't even phase me. After that round, it seemed that you had established that you were the guy, and now he was just there to hold on. Was that how it seemed to you in the ring? Absolutely. But still, he was sneaking some very hard punches in between that. So he was stronger than some people gave him credit for. Absolutely. Well, you have to think, when fighters come to fight the heavyweight champ of the world, like Ali, they, they automatically become better fighters. What happened in the fifth round that you saw? Was he? You knew that he was weakened enough after the fourth round that it was just a matter of, of time? Well, I knew I was going to get him. All right. Memories of, of Bone Crusher Smith passed through my mind. A guy who hugged you for 12 rounds. Well, no, I knew he wasn't He wasn't about to hug him for 12 rounds because he was trying to impress his Englishmen out here. And I'm just convinced, you know what I mean? These fellas, how dare them challenge me with their somewhat prim primitive skills. They're just as good as dead. I take all comers. I don't duck any man. Uh, can we assume that Michael Dokes is one of the prospects? All comers. Come one, come all, because nobody can get close to me. They're not even close. I'm the best fighter in the world. Now, with the situation that you I have. I want to fight, 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 and destruct the world, because I'm the best fighter in the world. Thank you very much, Larry. Thank you. All praise be to my children. I love you. Oh, oh God, I'm oh, man. What? Is this your shortest fight ever? In any time, amateur, professional ever? Assalamu alaikum, Ida. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, Lennox Lewis, Lennox, I'm coming for you. Mike, is it frustrating to train like you did and then have no, this in seven or eight train seconds? For this fight. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight, I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody that's ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. Are you saying now, Mike, that Mike? That's right. Mike, were you really sick this week? What was the problem? I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. You did that in sparring? No, I did it um, by a motorcycle accident. The doctor discovered I was doing my sit-ups, 2,500 a day with my 20-pound weight, and one day I couldn't move anymore. And I asked the doctor, what's wrong? And he said, um, believe it or not, it's wearing your back is broken slightly. All right, thank you, Steve. I'm now joined by Mike Tyson. Mike, first of all, let's go in chronological order. The headbutt in the second round, 
Uh, the headbutt in the second round, which opened the gash on your eye. Tell us about that first, please. Um, he butted me um, in the first round, but then he butted me again the second round. Then as soon as he butted me, I watched him. He had me holding, and he looked right at me, and I saw him, and he was going for, and he kept going for me, and he butted me again. He kept going down and coming up, and he charged into me. And no one warned him. No one gave him, took any points for him. What am I to do? This is my career. I can't continue getting butted like that. Like I got children to raise, and this guy keeps butting me, trying to cut me and get me stopped on cut. I got to retaliate. Now, immediately, you stopped. You stopped fighting immediately right there and you turned to Mills Lane and you said what and he the result was he did nothing but what did you say to Mills right at that time I don't remember what I said I told him that he butt me but I know I complained about being butted and we and we complained about the um the first fight listen Holyfield is not the tough warrior everyone says he is he got little nicks on him there and he quit I got an eye I got one eye I got one eye. He's not impaired. He got ears. I got one eye. Big day. If he take one, I got another one. I'm ready to fight. He didn't want to fight. I'm ready to fight him right now. Yeah, Mills Lane, no. Mills Lane stopped the fight. It wasn't Holyfield who stopped the oh, fight. Oh, he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to fight. Let me ask. Let me, we don't know what Mills did. Don't, okay. don't put nothing okay, on Mills. Okay. But Mills said he stopped the fight. You bit him. Was that a retaliation for the eye? when you bit him in his ear. Regardless of what I did, he bit, bit me for two fights. But you got to address it, Mike. Why I did, did you address, No, I did address it. I addressed it in the ring. Why, why did you do that, though, Mike? I mean, was Look that the proper me. response? Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I got to go home. My kids are going to be scared of me. Look at me, man. What are you going to do now in terms of your career, Mike? Well, you continue to fight. Very much respect, brother. Okay. Okay. Mike, let me ask you. It's been two and a half years since you won a fight. Did you ever start to doubt your abilities? Oh, listen. Everybody talks and say, Mike, I read these guys tell you I'm losing confidence because I'm talking loud and vulgar. I'm, t I'm talking vulgar because I'm angry of what I've experienced all my years through this boxing. And I'm just angry. And everyone else has a right to be angry too, but that's just how I express myself. Are you going to be more diplomatic in the future? Well, are you going to lose some of this anger? Long as I need respect. If you show me respect and stop writing trash articles about me, then I'll show you respect. I'm a man. I listen. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to waste my life because when I die, I'm going to paradise. And I'm not worried, so I'm in a hurry to die. But no one's going to disrespect me, and no one's going to write nonsense about me without me retaliating back. What, what do you mean? What, what do you mean you're ready to die? Can no, you clarify no, that? No, no, and, no. And all due respect, I'm saying regard. They try to assass assassinate my character and get my judges, the judges in Indiana upset, and the judges in Maryland upset. I'm a man, and I can only take so much. And I'm not going to sit back and take so much punishment. I'm a human being, and I need love just like everyone else. You can't talk about me and disrespect me. I have children, too. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Mike, first, let's start with you. Did you want to continue? Well, I would like to have continued, but I saw that I was getting beat on. I realized I don't think I have it anymore because um, I got the ability to stay in shape, but I don't got the fighting guts, I don't think, anymore. When did you recognize that? At what part of the fight? I don't know, early into the fight. Um, I'm just sorry I let everybody down. I mean, I just don't have this in my heart anymore. Did you feel as though you had it coming into the fight? Um, no, I'm, I'm just fighting to take care of my, um, my bills, basically. I don't have the stomach for this kind of no more. I got, I'm more, I'm more um, conscious of my children and those guys looking at my parents. I'm just, I don't have, I don't have that ferocity. I'm not an animal anymore. Does that mean we won't see you fight again? Yeah, that's most likely I'm not going to fight again. I'm not going to disrespect. I'm not going to disrespect the sport anymore by losing to this caliber of fighters. Jeff, why did you decide to step in at this point and tell referee Joe Cortez that you didn't want him to continue? I told everybody from day one when I came here that I'm not here. I love Mike, and um, that's enough. I could see that you know he done his best for those rounds. And listen, he wouldn't have done six rounds of that. You know, six months ago, 12 months ago, he done great rounds. I'm so proud of him today. And um, I want him to. I want him not just to get. We lost, but hey, a lot of great fighters lost the last fight. Jeff Fennick did. I want him to go out happy, proud, and able to look after his children. That's what he can do today. Mike, how difficult is this for you emotionally and mentally t to see this come to an end after well, after the career you've had? Not much because I don't have any desire for this anymore. So I basically don't care much about the sports. I'm just um, I'm sorry to disappoint the people. I wish they can get their money back some kind of way. You seemed as though in in the sixth round, like you were fighting for your career not to end with the headbutt. Was it intentional? No, but I'm just in there fighting and I'm a little desperate, so I'm trying to win. Mike, a lot of people wonder what, what you'll do now with your life. Boxing has been your whole life. Well, I'm sure I'll find something to do. Boxing doesn't define me. I'm just sorry to disappoint the people in the city. I know I, I didn't have it in my stomach no more, but I was in dire needs to take care of my life. Is Kevin McBride a good fighter, or was he just somebody caught, who caught you now at, at the end of your career? Well, you know, I can't take anything away from Kevin, but you guys know the situation. People in the boxing world know the situation. I know you've lost tonight. I know it's difficult, but are you in a better place in your head mentally 
at this portion of your life than you've been in the past? Oh, definitely. I have different friends, different associates. I don't even associate with my old crowd and associates no more. I don't get involved with that. I'm just I'm in a different world right now, a totally different spirit. Mike, we appreciate your time. It's been great to watch your career. It's been up and down. We've seen a lot of things out of you, and tonight we appreciate your sportsmanship and the way you've handled this. Thank you very much, Tim Gray. All right, Mike Tyson. Just Jeff. remember, there's 18,000 people here to see a legend, and he went out as a legend. That's absolutely true. As we bring Kevin McBride in, Mike, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, you're a legend, and I appreciate the fight, man. Good man. God bless. Thank you. Kevin, what was your thought process coming into this fight? What did you expect to be the outcome? I thought Mike was going to be fast like he was, and then, uh, you know, I, I stuck to fight with him a bit too much, and, uh, you know, he's a warrior, and uh, I, I respect the man, and I'm a warrior, and I just, you know, I come with a lot of heart from Ireland, you know, and, uh, you know. Were you surprised that he didn't come out like he has in the past, just throwing punches and, and trying to intimidate his opponents, as, as all of the tapes would have indicated to you? Well, you know, Tyson's a clever man. He's trying to look for the opening, and uh, thank God uh, he didn't get the punch on, and uh, I, you know, retaliated it good, so, uh, you know, he's a good fighter. Uh, Kevin, stay with us. Mike, I want to ask you, why did you come out so passive? We're so used to seeing you run across the ring in your first barrage of punches in the first round. Why did you change tonight after a career of that? I, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm not taking nothing away from Kevin. I don't love this no more. I'm just in here. Um, I, I just I don't love this no more. I haven't loved fighting since 1919, 1990. Um, but Kevin, congratulations on your career and good luck. How much? How much